you better preach it, preach it, say it, say it. Ah, uh, welcome to Preach Care Preach, another episode, another sermon. Of course, here with Rashad. What's up, man? And of course, I'm here with Mike uh, from NBA Quick Report on Twitter. What's going on? Nothing much, man. Uh, today, we're going to talk about a lose-lose situations, and we believe that it's, it, it's possibly three situations in the East, uh, three teams that they're going to have to face a difficult decision uh, coming up, and and we think either way, it could be a lose-lose, so they pretty much, I guess, in a limbo or or stuck facet. Um, so first, we're going to talk about the Philadelphia 76ers. And what I've been seeing from this series with the Raptors, um, which, you know, sh- I mean, should lean more Raptors win the series than the Sixers. But what I'm seeing is, is Embiid and, and Ben Simmons. And is it me or does these do these two really guys, like, fit together? Because I'm not, I'm not seeing a, you know, a Kobe, ver- a Kobe and Shaq type of uh, ordeal where they both are number ones or – or they both are so great that it doesn't matter um, that you know if they don't play together well or whatever the case may be. But it seems like some like NBA and Ben Simmons are not are not a a match made in heaven. And I feel like Sixers are gonna have to come to a, a decision eventually because I mean they're just gonna go the second round every year and then that's not gonna be good enough. Uh, so they have Embiid under contract for a little bit longer, a um, couple more years it looks like. Um, but the thing is, like Simmons can't spread the floor, and the thing is with that with that. Excuse me. <clears throat> you got two guys who are ball dominant players um, with Simmons not being able to spread the floor much. You know, he needs the ball in his hands to be effective. Um, and it's really hard to get spacing with them. It'd be different if it was like LeBron and Embiid because LeBron has a jump shot. But with Simmons, it's like you, you're seeing now with the way teams are keying in on Embiid um, and Simmons that he's not really producing, you know, in the playoffs as much as he was in the regular season. So I, I don't think these guys work together long term unless Simmons develops um, a consistent jumper. Yeah, I think the main problem Philly has is you have Embiid's health. He he can't stay healthy regular season or postseason. And then you have Ben Simmons, who he redshirted the year, and this is his second year playing, but he still hasn't developed a quality jump shot yet. So the predicament they're going to be stuck in is, do we pay these guys big money? Do we sign back Jimmy? Do we sign back Spies Harris? So on the floor, they would fit. If Ben got the jump shot, I think they can fit, but as constructed right now, they don't fit because Ben can't shoot the ball. I mean, he's scared to shoot the ball. I mean, you can't be scared to shoot the ball. You've been playing basketball almost your whole life. So I think that's the biggest dilemma. But I guess ultimately they're going to be stuck in a bad situation because if you give him B the contract coming up soon, he can't stay healthy. You lost on that. And if Ben continues to just – Hang out with Kardashians and don't get a jump shot. <laughs> yeah. You lose, you lose there too because if he don't. He, if he never wants to shoot the ball, you're gonna be stuck. So they're they're in a bad spot right now. Yeah, and the always why I mention this because like I mean you know when the Brooklyn Nets stole Game One and I think when NB set out in Game Three, you you could kind of see the energy from Ben Simmons of how well he was able to you know to attack the rim because one NB takes a lot of space and whether NB stretches the floor out you know at three point line or which he's better at in the post. It's kind of it's kind of a um, it's kind of hard for Ben Simmons to with, without a jump shot to have somebody clog up the plant like that. Like it, it feels like Ben Simmons need more of a Kevin Love uh, or, or like a Chris Bosh with him, like kind of like how LeBron had. But what LeBron like was able to do was able to step out and shoot as well. So I just thought that Ben Simmons when he did in Game Three that that against the Brooklyn Nets was just amazing. And you see when the when the paint just everything just opened up, he has more to work with and. I just don't see how him and NBA can. I mean, because like every year they're going to be second round and they're going to run to a team where it's, it might be the same amount of talent, but I mean, NBA and Ben Simmons going to kind of cancel each other or drown each other out a little bit. And and I, I just I, I like Philly, but it's, it feel like it feel like these two just either like I say either way you go, you, you're not going to have a winner. May the process continue. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's transition to the uh, Boston Celtics. They they lose in five. Don't remind me. <laughs> so, Mike, I told I told Rashad going into the series, we, we had a pretty good debate about who's going to win the series and why. And my main thing was that Boston didn't really have an advantage. And coming into the season and what they did last year, I know the expectations were very, very high. But the reason why I was so skeptical was because, one, they never fixed their biggest problem, which was rebounding. I mean, they just – all they did was bring back Kyrie and Gordon Hayward. Second – 
the guys that you know produced at a high level, Terry Rozier and Tatum and Brown, now that two guys are coming back, you know, taking their minutes away and taking some of the shots away, you can't get that full aspect and full, I guess, full circle of how great they was last year. And and that's why I feel like they wasn't able to to jail this season because you ask me a Rozier who kind of, I mean, I wouldn't say dominated the playoffs last year, but he was a problem last year. And now you're asking him to, to play a diminished role. You're asking Jalen Brown to play a diminished role because Kyrie needs the ball in his hands. You try to fit Gordon Hayward in, even though he's not the same player anymore. And like I said, they never fixed their their biggest problem. And this this offseason, Kyrie's a free agent. And I think if you let Kyrie walk, which they probably will, and he probably won't sign back anyway, you kind of you kind of making yourself well now Tatum's my Tatum's my best player. We got an aging Al Horford. Gordon Hayward's on this mega deal that we can't get rid of. And are we, do we have that star? Is Tatum gonna take a step? you know, a, a superstar, I wouldn't say superstar, but an all-star level step to where Boston can go past the second round. Because if Kyrie walks away, you don't have that star, that closer, like they did in, when they played the Pacers. And that's the that's their lose side if Kyrie walks. They lose if he signs back too. I mean, they don't they don't win either way because he doesn't fit with the team. He's a ball dumb that guy who doesn't make people better. So there's no if he picks, if he picks up his player option, that's bad for them because They'll be bringing back the same team they have right now. And, of course, if he opts out and becomes a free agent, I think the team will improve because they'll be playing with a chip on their shoulder saying, all right, we got rid of this guy. Now let's go back to what we were last year, which was making the East Finals. Granted, making the East Finals was kind of a lucky run because of, you know, how the East kind of shook out last year, you know, seeding-wise and stuff like that. Because I think the Cavs were four or five seed last year. So making the East Finals was kind of just a look of the draw seeding wise. They really didn't have a great team. You got tons of young players, but not a great team overall. So next year it's gonna be the same thing. But I guess it could work better because those guys know we don't have to feed Kyrie. Or we, we have to wait for him to feed us the ball to get our shot. Yeah, it's tough. Kyrie is for sure ball dominant. Um, and the thing is, he's been such a problem as far as his reputation. He's a tough fit. Um, he doesn't want to listen to whether it's a coach, GM, or or anything really. He's just a very, he's just a very odd player. Like he's very good, superstar level. But the thing is, he's such a like a philosopher wannabe. It just it makes <laughs> it seem like he doesn't care about basketball as much. It's really weird. But the thing with that team, it is a lose lose for me because a if he signs back, which he's not going to, but they're stuck with the same squad, like you said, and this team is not getting to the finals in the East. That's getting better and better every year because there's, there's too many pieces that are just forced together on that team. There's a lot of good players, but it's just like, it's not a right, a right fit. Um, And if he leaves, well, then what you're stuck with a Jason Tatum, who is unproven. Um, You're stuck with an aging Al Horford, like you said as well. And then you have guys who are fed up. Like Rogier is fed up. He was saying how, whether I'm here or not, I'm a top point guard in this league, you know, yada, yada. Um, it's definitely a lose-lose, and it's going to be a tough off season. And especially because, one more thing, they were linked to Anthony Davis all season, too. And um, when Kyrie goes, there goes their chance at Anthony Davis because that's who reportedly wanted to play with him. Actually, that's a, that's a very good topic because if – if you if you was able to swing, I know they had to wait to the the off season for some kind of I don't know, the contract how that worked, a while they couldn't trade for Davis. But um, but if you if they would be able to swing Davis, with whoever, however that may happen, that obviously fixes a lot of the problems and that would make it a win situation. But but yeah, if 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 Kyrie, if Kyrie walks away, Boston has no chance at at bring at bringing the Anthony Davis in. Boston is they're they're really stuck on all fronts because. You have Gordon Hayward with guaranteed $32 million next year, and then he has a player option the year after that for about $34, $35 million. And he's, 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 he's going to take that. Right? Yeah, he, he definitely <laughs> going to take that. <laughs> <laughs> he, he'd be crazy to turn it down. Then for next season, you have Al Horford coming up with a $30 million player option. There's no way he turns that down. And then they've already locked up Marcus Smart. You still have Tatum on his rookie deal. Do they bring back Marcus Morris because his contract expires? They have one more year in Jalen Brown and his rookie deal. Do they sign Rozier to be their starting point guard? Because he's a he's a free agent now. So what what do they do? Like, what do they do going forward? Do they try to 
bring Rozier back or go get a point guard or like what do they do? They're not gonna have a great draft pick, you know. Even though they've been fleecing people for years, they're not gonna have a great draft pick. So what right. do they do next? Well, the thing with that is, don't forget they have picks from other teams. They have uh, the Grizzlies' top eight protected pick. So if that falls nine or ten, they have that. They have the Kings' top pick, which is only protected for the first overall pick. It's going to be right around 12 to 14 or something like that. Either way. And then they have the Clippers pick as well. So they have three picks that are going to be top 20. And if they can convince Kyrie to stay, um, they could swing those picks and more for Anthony Davis. I mean, that's like a dream scenario, but I wouldn't put it past Danny Ainge. I know a lot of people uh, are coming at Brad Stevens uh, a lot, you know, saying that he don't, he don't get a pass for this. But, I, was, you know, at, for me, I would look at the front office kind of view and – I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty disappointed at what Danny Ainge had um, did on the offseason because I mean he really just you know obviously Gordon Harrell getting hurt in the first minutes of the game last season uh, kind of I guess kind of shocked him and, and you know shocked the how the dream scenario was going to work with the Boston Celtics but after after seeing Gordon Hayward and you got these picks which I mean pretty you pretty much you pretty much was hoping three top ten picks but of course the Kings outplayed themselves and the Clippers definitely outplayed themselves. So you were thinking maybe three top ten picks and now you're talking about ah our picks don't look as strong as they as mm-hmm. we pre- as we predicted to it to look and and of course now now you got a team like the Nets who who you fleeced a long time ago now they're actually you know a solid team and getting pieces and getting better and better. And now if these picks don't pan out or you you know you, you can't get somebody uh, good enough in the lottery or maybe you know I, I really don't know who Who's around that that pick, but or what you need? But I, I I'm really going to stress to Danny Ainge that you must get a center. I I don't I don't care who it is. And, and their part, first priority is not big man, because Al Horford, as great as he uh, is is he's he's coming to an end, and he really to me has been playing out of position his whole career. I really think he's more of a power forward than a center. But um, you get you get a big man, possibly get Rozier. Then I mean, you're going to be a tough nagging team that teams. Like the Bucks and the Raptors, assuming the Kawhi stay, are going to worry about, but they're they're really not too worried. You know, they, they'll still win the series, but you know they they had to play a little a little harder and and to just just to get out of the round. But Boston just in a uh, a very very peculiar spot, and especially from like two years ago, you projecting what Boston was going to be and how great you know how many stars they were going to get and all this, and now we come into a, a, a kind of a halt and saying like, man. Where, where did it all go wrong so fast? But to me, it's yeah. a weak draft, though. Like, the, the piece y'all mentioned, to me, it's a weak draft outside of Zion and John Moran and R.J. Barrett. Like, what's next? Jared Culver? I mean, as far I, think, as, I think he's going to be fine, but, you know, it's not like a deep draft. As far as star, I mean, as far as star talent, after those th- first three guys, I, I don't know who's going to, you know, become a star. But, like, it's, like back in the day, we didn't know Paul George was going to be a star. We didn't know Kawhi was going to be a star. So, possibly somebody could emerge. But as far as – projecting right now I just think it's this I mean it's those three guys for right now well and it's hard because Boston's a team that's built to win now they're not trying to build for five years from now you know what I mean mm-hmm. so why why do they want to throw rookies in there uh when they already have a bunch of young guys who are still on the come up too that's true but they're still so, stuck. like so do they even start Gordon Hayward do you let Jason uh Jalen Brown get the minutes like what do, what do you even do lineup wise you know because I feel like Brown should get more minutes than Hayward. Granted, he has the contract, but Hayward hasn't bounced back yet. I would have Jalen Brown starting over Gordon Hayward. I would too. I, I mean, Hayward had I, off the top of my head. I feel like he maybe had two good games all year. I mean, I I don't know, eleven and four were his averages or something like that. It's, I mean, for thirty plus million dollars. And that was I know he, I I know he had a freak accident and it happens and it sucks. I'm sure mentally he's not. Ready, but like, yeah, I, I, I had big, I had big ups for uh, for Gordon Hayward. And I thought him coming over here, with, especially with his college coach, man, this, I, I was, I mean, I, I wasn't gonna say uh, Boston was gonna be, you know, a, a finals, you know, team, but I, to me, when he came over, I was like, man, you talking about a guy who was gonna average twenty five, five and five? I was like, man, this is gonna be a problem, especially with you had him and Kyrie together. I thought that was gonna be something special, and uh, we kind of got ruined by that, you know, but. One last question. Is it possible that we maybe overrated Gordon Hayward all along? Because, you know, he only had one year of getting 20, 20 points. He's only been a one time All Star. So, and he really only started three full seasons in Utah 2013, 2014, 2014, 2015, and 2015, 2016. You know, uh, those like the really main years he really started 
you know, really getting into his stride. Producing, yeah. yeah took him so, a few years to get going. So do we even think he was possibly overrated? I mean, uh, another example, look at Chandler Parsons. You know, he was looking pretty decent, and then he went and got paid, and he was never the same. So is it possible that we overrated some of these guys when it was free agency time? Well, I can tell you this. So, you know, you know how, how Gordon Hayward, you know, had, had his had his great season, then followed by Ronnie Hood's emergence as far as scoring the basketball with the team around him, and then you got Donovan Mitchell doing the same thing. Now, I think Donovan Mitchell is is better than Ronnie Hood, of course, but in that in that Utah system, when when you have a lot of defensive players around you, I feel like I feel like you get more if you are a scoring scoring type of you know player. I feel like you got more freedom, and I don't know what it is, but I feel like, I feel like you know how how I thought Rodney Hood was going to be in Cleveland, um, how we thought Gordon Hayes was going to be in Boston. It it, it kind of what you saw in Utah, and you saw how how efficient they were shooting, and and how I mean it looked like it was easy. I mean maybe that's probably why that I mean, just the system around them, and you, you you get the free will to just be a scorer with with you know Gobert around you, favors you got Ingles who can who can play defense and shoot the three ball. You got a pass first point guard. So um, maybe it was just because how the team was built around him and how how we just – I mean, I, I thought Gordon Hayward was an all-star type of player. So uh, maybe I was wrong too. It's not like it's a bad take. I mean, they did pay him $30-plus million. So you're not the only one that thought that, right. you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I yeah. Bad, bad, bad contract. I mean, it's a bad contract, but they I mean, they, they try to make a splash and maybe maybe they, they, they push their hand too far, but – I mean, as far as uh, you know, maybe waiting waiting out to last year. Um, I mean, going after a Jimmy or somebody or Paul or George or something, but they went ahead and got their guy, especially his his relationship with the coach. So I, I figured that was that was a, a real strong reason why they even went for Gordon Hayward. Yeah, I guess at the time it wasn't a bad contract. It's just the hindsight. Oh yeah, he gets hurt first. He gets hurt first game, and now he's not producing. And then you get the whole element of. Kyrie doesn't want to be LeBron's sidekick anymore, so they give up assets to go get him. And, you know, I think with Isaiah Thomas, Hayward would have probably fit better because, you know, I, I, Isaiah would have got him involved, and who knows, maybe he gets injured still or not, but it would probably been a better fit with Isaiah versus uh, the Kyrie thing. Yeah, I, I mean, it is. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Mike. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was just thinking, I was like, yeah, I actually forgot that Isaiah Thomas was there first. But then go to Harry, then Kyrie got traded for. I I I I forget that for whatever reason. But yeah, Isaiah Isaiah Thomas. Oh, quick question on that one. Do we do we think is Isaiah Thomas' Celtic run far is way better than Kyrie's, right? Yes. Oh yeah, absolutely. Okay. I just want to make sure we're on the same page now. Go ahead, Mike. I was just gonna say, I mean, for what he was saying as far as Isaiah Thomas. Oh, that would have been a better fit, I think, because at the time, I mean, IT wasn't ever in the media as far as causing problems, being a head case, whatever, anything was. And I love Kyrie. I'm a big Cavs fan, and what he did for us was amazing. But regardless of the fact, um, Kyrie's just got too much baggage. And I feel like Gordon Hayward is a guy who has never had any asterisks by his name. So you pair him with a guy like Isaiah Thomas, who was the same way, chip on his shoulder kind of guy, just a grinder. I mean, that that's like a match made in heaven as far as, you know, your guard-forward combination. I, as, as we as we transition to our last one, um, so we we talked about how Kyrie and and Kimba are on the same level. Now we may say Kyrie's better, uh, but as far as tier wise and and how they how their game is set, I think they're pretty much the same player. Um, I, our our biggest our biggest issue, Mike, is that we're well, not a big issue, but our, our biggest takeaway is that one was fortunate to play with LeBron James and. You know, when we get into this whole who the best point guard debate, blah, 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 and a lot of stuff comes down to your situations and your circumstances. Like, like I know a lot of people always debate me um, because I, I always say um, Damian Lillard is better than Kyrie. People want to say, well, well, Kyrie got a championship. I was like, well, Dame could have had a championship if he had LeBron. I feel like a Dame or a Kimba could have made the shot that that Kyrie made because, one, they're both – all three of them are ISO scoring guards. I mean, scoring guards, so I feel like they had an opportunity as well. Um, and I feel like a lot of people don't realize that that uh, that Kyrie and Kimba are on the same same the same level because they they pretty much score the same assist rebounds pretty much the same and and Kimba never had a team like Kyrie like Kyrie's been fortunate to have two teams as far as with Cavs with LeBron there and he got the Boston team and while Kimba's best next best player how always been with Jeremy Lamb or a um, Al, Al Jefferson, Jefferson. Yeah, Al and- Jefferson. 
Michael Michael Keaton, right. yeah, Chris Nicholas, Nick, Nicholas Platoon. <laughs> like yeah, and he he never. That's Biz <laughs> Matt <Matt-Biombo. laughs> <laughs> And and so so really, I I want to hear your takeaway about about not not really saying who's the better one, but kind kind of kind of seeing the light that that both both players are really the same. They to be honest, neither one of them as the number one player can can win a championship. And I've been saying this for a while about Kyrie. And you know a lot of people are giving me a, a lot of a lot of light back because just because he he was winning in the playoffs and I'm like well he didn't make the playoffs until LeBron James came and on top of that if Kim, if LeBron decided to go I want to go to Charlotte I mean I pretty much knew that I think the same outcome maybe not a championship but getting to the playoffs and being a winner I, you know Kimber Kimber would have been in the same light if if he had the opportunity so I, I want to know uh, what's your take on on both those players so it's hard to say who's better than who like a lot of bias but. I think Kyrie is a little better, but as far as like being number one, neither guy is cut to be a number one. They're both number twos. They're both phenomenal number twos. They'd fit well with, they'd fit well next to a KD, LeBron, Kawhi, um, those kind of players. But they really are on the same tier to me. Um, I think Kyrie's just a little bit more efficient, a little bit more crafty than Kemba, but Kemba still brings basically every element that Kyrie brings to the table. Um, they're really both the same type of player. I just feel like that they are both suited better as a number two compared to a number one. They can't lead their team to a title. And and that's the main point because some people, you know, they try to say, oh, well, Kyrie's tier one and Kim was like tier two or three. It's like, no, they're they're on the same same tier. I mean, as far as, you know, career highlights, they're about the same. You know, Kyrie has 49 double-doubles, two triple-doubles. Kemba has 44 double-doubles, two triple-doubles. You know, Kyrie's been a six-time All-Star. And, of course, he got a few of those early in his career from getting all those empty stats on those bad Cleveland teams. And uh, Kemba's a three-time All-Star. He's made the playoffs twice as a as the lead guy. Kyrie never made the playoffs as the lead guy. He was in Cleveland getting empty stats. He got rescued by LeBron. So, I mean, of course, he did win the championship. He hit the key shot. So I will give him credit for that, just like Kimba was the main reason for a UConn's run in 2011 as they carried him to a, a NCAA championship. So on the career highlight side, like, these guys are so similar. Mm. And then just look at, like, the last three seasons, you know, Kyrie, he's always injured. Like, I don't I, – I value somebody being healthy and available. And I know Kev agrees with me because we, we had a debate about this, like, a few months ago, but I think in, on Facebook with some guys back in November – about if LeBron had Kimba, LeBron would probably have two titles in Cleveland instead of just the one because Kimba was always healthy. He's always available. Yeah, that's true. I mean, Kimba's missed what four games in the last three years, something like the, that. The last three, the, the last three seasons, Kimba's played two hundred forty-one games. He's so he's only missed five out of a possible two hundred forty-six. Versus Kyrie, he's only been in one hundred ninety-nine. He's missed forty-seven games. Well, that was rest, injury, yep. whatever the case may be. He's missed, and that's just a regular season. And he's, not even missed, he's the, missed a the lot of games. playoff games. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, that, so, and like, just look at the stats, though. I mean, the last three seasons, if you, if you look at the averages, Kyrie's 24.5 points, six assists, four rebounds, 48% field goal percentage, 40% from three, 89% from the free throw line, and Kimba's 23.7 points, 5.7 assists, 3.8 rebounds, 43% field goal, uh, 37 from three, and 85 from the free throw line. So, just like you said, efficiency wise, Kyrie does beat him out, which which counts because you want an efficient guy. But I think some of that comes from he played with LeBron that year, and he's on that Boston team where you have a little more help versus Kimba. He's he's got to go out there and do it all every night. Yep, I agree. I agree. So it, it, in the off season, this, this coming up for Kyrie, um, just before we uh, transition always to the Hornets, um, do you see do you see Kyrie possibly? And I'm, I'm a Lakers fan, and you know I'm I'm a I'll tell you now, my I'm, I'm the president of the uh, Kyrie Hater Club, um, <laughs> but he does need to, I, I, and I think he learned his lesson. I, I think he learned his lesson that he's not a number one. I, I really think so, and I think that he he most likely should go with Kevin Durant and Kevin Durant size go somewhere. But could you see a reunion out there in LA? And do you think it's possible that 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 Kyrie does head that way? With LeBron, I think it's I think it's very possible. I'm not saying it's it's gonna happen. I just think that I would not be surprised at all if he went to LA. Um, it just seems like too good of a story. Him and LeBron, they've had a great history. Um, 
they had some stuff go down. We know everybody knows about that. But um, even like LeBron said, after their finals loss, he said, you know, we'll be back. And, you know, maybe they will go back, but not with the Cavs. You know, they're with the Lakers. Um, and Kyrie knows now he's not number one. LeBron knows he needs help. LeBron knows he can't do it by himself anymore. And then that supporting cast in L.A. is not going to cut it for him. Um, purely based on this season, it was a total dumpster fire in L.A. Um, I think Kyrie to L.A. is a very big possibility, and as well as the Knicks, too. Yeah, and I see, I see a lot of people saying the, the Nets, and I was kind of questioning – why? Why is the? I mean, I know he's from New Jersey, but why is the Nets, um, you know, from that area? But why is the Nets a a, a a team that's that's brought up? Because why? In my, in my opinion, I feel like Nets are fine with D'Lo as as their guy, and they to me, I think the Nets need to go out and find find the big man because like a Kevin Love or something. I don't know if Kev Cavs got him up for trade, but if somebody somebody of that nature could in the in the playoffs in the Sixers, that that's what they lacked was that that front court player. And I don't know if getting Kyrie or you know even going to see about him unless unless you get rid of D'Lo uh, is a is a smart move. Well, yeah, Kyrie to the Nets doesn't make any sense. But if I think I, I guess that based off of Russell's a restricted free agent, so if somebody offers some of the deal they don't want to pay for, in comes Kyrie, and there you go. Well, and the thing with that is you let Russell walk, you bring Kyrie in. They'd also have enough money to um, if they dump Allen Crab as well, they'd have enough money for another max slot. So that could get them KD, Kawhi, Butler, whoever that third max spot is. Then you compare Kyrie with KD, one of those three guys. I'm just saying KD, for example. But KD, Kyrie, you still have Spencer Dinwiddie. You have Levert, who That's a bad, was playing like, That's a bad playing like an all-star. That's a bad man right there. <laughs> He's really good. Then you got Jared Allen. I mean, Jared Allen made a name for himself this year. He blocked everybody in the NBA. Um <laughs> Then you got, I mean, you got a shooter in Joe Harris who, whatever. I mean, it's, it's a very serviceable player, and you still have two first round picks this year. So I can see why Vegas is putting the Nets as the favorite to land Kyrie, which I saw that yesterday. And it was kind of like, really, D'Lo. But then I look into it, I'm just like, okay, it kind of makes sense. Yeah, I mean, yeah. If, if D'Lo's leaving, then I'm, I'm then I'm okay with it. I'm just, I'm like, I'm like, dang, man, my boy D'Lo can't catch a break, can he? He, he he put a team on his back and he still get traded. What do y'all think about a sign and trade of Boston gives Kyrie his five years? Because if he signs Fred, he only gets four years. So what do you think about a sign and trade Kyrie for D'Angelo Russell straight up? That's not bad. It's been, yeah, and but then if I'm Boston, I'll, I'll let Rozier walk. There's, there's no point in keeping him. Oh, I would. Yeah, I'd let him walk too for sure. Yeah, that's not bad. That's not a bad idea either. Yeah, I think that would probably work better if Kyrie wants to go to Brooklyn pretty bad. You know, go ahead and get your extra. Yeah, I think I think if he gets the deal from Boston, it'll be a five year, one hundred ninety million dollars. So I'd take that versus the four years of whatever's like one forty five, one fifty, one sixty, something like that. So, and then who knows what Russell can get on the open market? But I think a sign and trade would work better because if they don't believe in Russell and he already had the Arizona soda can incident at the airport. <laughs> <laughs> So you know stuff like that, man. You don't you don't want those bad bad headlines when you're trying to get your money. So who knows what could happen? But I wouldn't mind it a sign and trade for uh, Kyrie and D'Angelo Russell. Yeah, that could work out both ways for sure. And I mean, Russell's only 23 years old too. Don't forget about that. He's still really young, and he had an amazing year. Oh yeah. Um, so he 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 showed everybody he's you know he's legit. He could do what he's got to do to help the team, especially with the Nets. They. They surprised everybody. Oh, yeah. Very. So, while we talk about free agency, let's go into the Hornets. And, you know, a report came out maybe a week or two ago about Kimber Walker and his contract deal. Um, and he's – I think he's going to get the max, and that's over $200 million from the Hornets. And and I think it's a lose-lose either way on this one as well because, one, if you resign Kimber Walker, $200 million contract, now you have, you have, you have contract constraints everywhere. With Batum making twenty seven, uh, you pay all these guys, Zellers of the world, Kaminsky's. You got get kill good Chris. All these guys, Marvin Williams making double digit figures, um, and basically Kimball is getting paid to lose because I mean they're not going to win games. They're going to struggle to even make the playoffs. They're going to come down to the last game of the season like every year, and whether whether Kimba can get them in or you know whether the other, another team knocks them out. Um, it's gonna be it's gonna be the same thing for the next five years if you Kimba, and 
And if you do that, Kemba still has no help. And my thing is, if Kemba, you're, you're not a you're not a restricted guy, so you can choose which, whether you want to go back or not. And I know, I know, players don't can't. It's hard to pass up that kind of money, and which I, I understand about financial security. I understand about all that. But if if Kemba resigns back with the Hornets, um, it's kind of a he, he's not he's not in a Damian Lillard situation where his team is winning, so he don't he don't, he doesn't need the stack. You know, he he doesn't need the stack to win. Because even if Blazers don't win the championship, at least Dame is getting there. At least Dame's, you know, in the playoffs, having those playoff moments that he always have. Um, and yet, Kim Walker is at home mostly every year, um, watching the final, uh, watching the playoffs, watching the finals. And I think Kim Walker has an opportunity right now to, obviously, I, I know LeBron and Kate, Kevin Durant is going to try to get Kim, uh, Kyrie's at their first priority. But if if, if Kyrie follows Durant, I, I don't see why Kim wouldn't. Say you know what? Let's go. Let's go. Let's be smart about this. Let's let me go look at a Dallas team with Porzingis and Luca. Let me go look at uh, joining LeBron in LA. Let me look at uh, maybe joining Pacers with Oladipo and and, and replacing Collison because Pacers all they needed was a closer against Celtics and who knows Pacers could have won that series. So if you Kimba, resigning is is is, is for your, for your sake is is losing and for the Hornets is losing because they can't do anything and they're just gonna lose and put people in the seats to watch Kimba. But then they won't they won't make any extra money in the playoffs or nothing like that. You can go first. Oh, you can go ahead, Mike. Okay. I got a long soliloquy on this one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh it's a lose lose. I'm just being straight with that. He um the Hornets, whether they sign him or not, what are they gonna do? They sign him, they're gonna have him for five plus years. They're gonna do the same stuff they've been doing the past se- whatever, six, seven years and, and that's just they're a fringe playoff team. Nothing. They have no money to sign anybody else. And even if they did, who really wants to go to Charlotte? Mm-hmm. That's my take on that. Um, now, with that, it's kind of like this deal could be like the John Wall deal. What I mean, they're going to give him all this money, but but then what's what's next? They have nothing left for anybody else. They should have traded him last year when his value was higher. Then they, they could have just, like, reset the franchise. And, you know, even if, even if that does put you in a bad spot for a few years, you're going to stockpile picks, stockpile assets. And, you know, kind of reset yourself because he is going to be 29 years old um, this month, actually. So, I mean, a five-year deal, I mean, he's going to be 34 at the end of the deal. Is that really what you want to be paying a guy $40 million for? I, I don't really think so. Um, it's a big lose-lose. And if you let him walk, oh, my God, how many games would they win? 15. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> it's tough. Um, but, I mean, like you said, I think Dallas would be – a a really interesting fit for him um, with Doncic and you have Porzingis and that team would be pretty, pretty cool to see. Um, I saw a report from New York times that the Mavericks were going to go after him as well as Chris Middleton. Um, and then, like you said, with the Lakers, it really just, we have to wait on that. I know like it opens up on July 1st, but you're going to have to wait at least a few days. Nothing with the Lakers will happen until we know exactly what's happening with KD, Kawhi and, and uh, Kyrie. So um, we won't find out Kemba's final answer until at least those three guys sign, unless he signs back right away with the with the Hornets. Stupid. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. Where do I begin? There, there is so much <laughs> we can say about this. <laughs> there is so much we can say about this entire situation. So just just bear with me. First of all, <laughs> Kemba Walker is the sixth highest paid player on his team. <laughs> That's first off. Nicholas Batum. Biz Mac Biyombo, Marvin Williams, Cody Zeller, and Michael Kidd Gilchrist all make more said, than Kimber Walker. Mm. And all and all those and three of those guys, Batum, Marvin, and, and Michael Kidd Gilchrist, they have player options for next season. So that's ridiculous. I mean, why are you signing guys like Biyombo for to seventeen million dollars? All he does all he does is play defense. Hey, I thought play defense he, he undersized. <laughs> Six nine. <laughs> That's funny. I thought Jordan. Go I ahead, thought Mike. Jordan was supposed to be the goat. He's supposed to be like you know, kind of stopping this. Shit. Like what's he? What's he got going on over there in Charlotte? <laughs> I don't think he'd be there. <laughs> no, he must not be based on that roster. <laughs> you guys leave it to my second point. Kimba wouldn't be in the situation, and they wouldn't be in the situation if they just drafted oh, better. Man. I mean, I understand it. I understand the franchise came back in two thousand four. They were the Bobcats, and you kind of got to get the fan base back and things like that. But 
I got some names for y'all. Don't don't let la- don't laugh. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> because this is this is terrible. 2004, your first round pick is Emeka Okafor. Not bad because him and the White were kind of neck and neck. He's coming off a championship you at UConn. Not bad. But after that, 2005, Raymond Felton, another guy, good college player, coming off championship. Okay. Third, eight picks later, number 13, you get Sean May. Didn't pan mm. out. The next, the next year, Adam Morrison didn't pan out. Ryan Hollins, Brandon Wright, Jared Dudley, DJ Augustine, Alice Ajinka, Gerald Henderson. Like, where are these guys now? <laughs> I mean, you didn't hit on a pick till you got Kimba in 2011. That was at number nine. So you weren't even tanking good enough to get a, a top pick. You kind of got lucky Kimba fell into your lap. They drafted Tobias Harris, mm. traded, him to, traded him to Milwaukee. You get Michael Kidd Gilbert off the, U, uh, the UK championship. You get Cody Zeller, Noah Vonley, Shabazz Napier, terrible. and you trade that pick to Miami. Frank Kaminsky. Like, why are you drafting the they same draft, type of players? They drafted like, Vonley, Zeller, and Kaminsky, what, relatively back to back? Yeah, Zeller was 2013, Vonley 2014, oh, Kaminsky 2015. <laughs> Like, 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 like you're, you're drafting the same type of players. Like, what the heck are you doing? You get Malik Monk. He hasn't panned out. So you wouldn't be in a situation of signing these bad contracts if you just drafted better. I mean, I don't have a list in front of me of who went after these guys, but let's just be honest. We know better well, players went. But I know Don Mitchell guys. went 14. So whatever year that was, <laughs> that's, that's one. Kyle Kuzma <laughs> went 27. That's another one. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, you do. You don't want to look at those lists. It'll make you really mad. Man, they 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 drafted Shea Gilgis Alexander and traded him to the Clippers. Like, come on, Charlotte, what are you doing? Like, you got to do better than yeah. that. So, as an organization, they're gonna lose regardless. They're they're gonna keep drafting bad. And if you sign Kimba, you're gonna have a undersized point guard who will be based on like a Chris Paul type deal, where when he gets 32, 33, 34, it's gonna be a a bad contract then because you you won't you won't draft well enough to even get people to come play with them to play with them. So he'll get paid and you'll get, you know, some season ticket holders, but that's about it. And for Kimba it'll be bad because I know the guy wants to win. I mean, when we see how he plays, he wants to win. But I think his loyalty could be his downfall. He could want to stay there just out of loyalty. So if he wants to stay out of loyalty, that's fine. But staying in Charlotte just for based on loyalty, that's a bad idea. Go team up with LeBron. Go team up with KD or try to go to Utah and play with Donovan Mitchell. Try to go to the Mavs and play with Doncic and Porzingis. Go somewhere else. Just don't stay in Charlotte. Just don't stay there. And the thing about Kimber is, if he if he really stays in Charlotte, man, like I understand the loyalty. I, I, I get I get all of that, but you're not. I don't even think he's from Charlotte, so it's not like he. That's his like hometown. So I, I mean, I know the the city treats you well, and Charlotte's a nice city to know stay in, but. You gonna always overpay for players, and really, if Charlotte hit on just one one draft pick, they probably would have been fine. Like if, instead of, it's, I mean, I, I can't really tell who who in what draft, but instead of a, uh, I know for a fact they passed on Miles Turner because Miles, uh, I think they had a pick. Uh, I think I think that's when they drafted Zeller. Miles Turner was uh, went to the Pacers after that. So that's if you had just yeah, if did. you just did that, you probably would have been playoffs this year. Now you you, you probably you, you lost first round obviously because the East had a big four. And you know the okay, but uh, go ahead. Devin Booker went four picks after Kaminsky. Oh well, sh- man. So, <laughs> you talking about Kim and Devin Booker, Miles Turner? That's a big three right now. Man, that's just, yep. oh man, and it, it, it's really it's really sad. But I, I really hope that I mean, I, I, Mitch Kupchak should be smarter than the average bear. And when he got the job last year, I think I think he got it last year. Like you said, they should have traded Kimba when his value was was high. And people was asking for him, but now they want to keep him to do what? I mean, sell tickets. Ah, oh, man, I, be a mediocre basketball team. Yeah, see, and and you, you, the thing about it is, you're not even ta- you're winning an, enough games to not even have a great pick. So you're gonna be once again in the same area when you got Zeller. What well, was Zeller? What a ten, pick like pick nine, ten? I feel like all of them was in the same area, uh, like between that nine and. Yeah, for yeah, 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 for the most part, it worked. Kaminsky went nine, Malik Monk went eleven, Cody Zeller went four, uh, Vonley went nine. So, you know, outside of a few years, Kimba went nine. I mean, outside Gilchrist of the, and 
Uh, yeah, in, in, yeah, for where they those, those guys went number two, you know, for the most part, Charlotte's been drafted right in the middle because you know they they always win about 35, 36 games. You know, you can't if you're gonna be bad, be yeah. all the way bad. Don't be in the middle. Yeah, so this is the perfect time for them to do that. And Kimba, if if he if he should he better sign back because that that really tells me a lot about himself because I understand I know I know y'all seen the reports about Dame Lillard saying yeah I'm never gonna uh, team up with nobody because blah 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 blah. But his situation is very different. He he's in the playoffs, and Kimber, you're not. So don't you can't you really can't have that same mentality about not trying to team up with somebody. And, and if you if you want to if you want to uh, prove that people that you you can be a, a, a I put a quotation around this a number a number one, uh, go to Indiana with Depot where you y'all can battle. You know, saying so y'all y'all both work well together. You'd be like I guess kind of like the Rosen and Lowry where you didn't know who the one was right. And like, or go to Dallas, and I mean, even though you got a, you know, you got Porzingis, who's a, a magical freak, and you got Luca, who's already a monster. But at least if you go there, you know, maybe maybe you know they're Europeans. Maybe you can get lucky, and they'll say you be you better. Blah blah. At least that's not teamed up with Kevin Durant, LeBron, a uh, 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 quote unquote already superstars and Hall of Fame first ballots. And at least you got you got to exactly. you kind of grind it with you kind of grind it with with players on your level. So maybe that's what he should do. Uh, if you if, if that if that's what he's thinking about, he don't want to chase and team up. At least it's kind of like a lower, a step down, and you're not trying to uh, cheat, you know, cheat up with LeBron or Durant. You can just go down to the next level. That's that's fine with me. Well, he's from the Bronx in New York, so if he went to the Knicks and paired up with Durant, that would be totally fine. It would be like a homecoming, so they could probably energize him for about two years and. You know, barring KD's injury being anything major, they could probably form a decent tandem. Uh, and it'll be clear KD's the one, Kim was the two, so that won't be a, a conflict versus I think if Kyrie teamed up with KD, I don't, I don't think Kyrie enjoys like the grind of the regular season. Like, he get hurt all the time. I don't think he enjoys the regular season grind, and I don't think he enjoys the media. So I think Kimba, he can handle the media because he's you know, he's from New York. He played at UConn. He was a star. He's in Charlotte. They don't have, they're not a huge media market, but – he doesn't mind, you know, doing all the presses and things like that. I think I don't think Kyrie likes that kind of stuff. So, if somebody had to go to New York, I prefer Kemba in New York over Kyrie. Yeah, I think that makes more sense for Kemba. And like you said, playing high school in, in New York, it makes total sense. And don't forget, they get the number one pick. You got Zion right there too. That'd be insane. If if Indy Star does go to New York, and I mean, I think I think the NBA is gonna rig that lottery anyway. The, the draft lottery was tonight, right? No, it's uh, it's no, the no, fourteenth Tuesday, Tuesday night. Okay. Yeah, fourteen. Okay, man. If I just, I just know they're gonna do the same thing they did to get Patrick Ewing over there. They gonna do the same thing to Zion, get him in New York, regardless, regardless of who comes. You know, regardless of if Durant come or not, they, I think they're gonna make so that's that gonna be a bigger news in itself. Uh, I would be hit. shocked if the Knicks did not get the first pick. Oh yeah, they they need it though. Yes. So Mike, if you have them one pick, you're the Knicks. What do you do? It's hard to say. With free agency, I think you got you. I think you got to take Zion. I mean, I, there's no reason to trade the pick or whatever it is because Zion's so like he's he's this generationally good that he's going to draw players to him, draw media, draw fans, draw everything. So even if they strike out on free agency, they still have Zion to sell tickets and at least you know make it a spot for guys in the future. Now let me ask you this now, while, while you're on the subject. If so, what was the whole reason of trading Porzingis? Um, is, is it to tank more? Because if if they, they trade this and got Dennis Smith Jr. and they want him to be the point guard, but then all these signs are pointing at Kimba and Kyrie, who are obviously better players. So, what does that mean with Dennis Smith Jr.? Are they did they just trade Porzingis? Because I mean, because if you could have got Porzingis, kept Porzingis, and got Zion, I mean, I feel like. That with addition of Kyrie or Kimber, that's that's pretty solid in my opinion. And I just want to see like what 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 were they thinking as far as trading Porzingis and getting this new junior thinking he might be the guy. I don't know. Is, is it just in case they strike out or no? It was kind of like the whole Kawhi thing with the Spurs. Porzingis didn't trust the Knicks, so he wanted out. And I think with him coming off the injury and the unfortunate news of like the whole rape allegation, I think they wanted to kind of move on from him, and he wanted to move on from them because of this. How it's how it's being it's being ran terrible there. So I think he wanted to kind of get out, and you know if it's a bad marriage, go ahead and go ahead and separate. So I think that was the whole thinking behind it, and they got a young stud and DSJ back. So I think that was the thinking behind all of that. But if I get them, of course I hope they get the pick. 
But if I get it, I think they should draft Zion. Or if you get a guarantee from KD, he's coming there. You sign KD and you trade that first pick to the Pelicans to bring in Anthony Davis. Mm. They just they, so, mm. <laughs> <laughs> because because I, because I I I don't I don't think Anthony Davis can win as the one either. Like he, I think he's a top five player. I think the top five right now is not no order. Well, I, I won't be lame. I'll go order. <laughs> I think Durant's number one. I think Kawhi's number two. I think LeBron's number three. I think Anthony Davis is number four, and I think James Harden's number five. I have Giannis at six because he can't shoot. That's the main reason. I know he plays defense better than Harden, but he can't shoot, so I can't put him number five. And I think Harden's the MVP. So I think Hart's number five. But if you can pair Kevin Durant in the Knicks with Anthony Davis, that's what you need to contend in the East for like the next decade. Yeah. Yeah. Now, do I think Davis I think Davis can be a number one? Um, but it probably had to be like a number one, kinda like um a kind of a like a like a Shaq number one where his number two is quote unquote Kobe, which he almost like same level, which I guess I guess that could be a Davis and Durant going back and forth. Um or if your team is kind of similar to how the Rockets were back in the '90s, where the big man, but everywhere else you stood, like you got a good, a good point guard, a good shooting guard, good small forward, they might not be great like you know, like Hakeem or Davis is, but they all, they all can 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 play basketball and, and get the job done. Um, <clears throat> but that would be that would be very exciting, and I, I'm I'm kind of hoping David Griffin can do something to work that out because I really like Drew Holiday and Davis together. I feel like that's a that's a nightmare like, defensively. And if they can with, with Julius Randle, I, I I think that's I mean I, I know that team needs some more pieces around that, but I mean I feel I feel like those three right there and whatever they can do should should be good, especially with David Griffin there. But yeah, if Davis have to move on, him in New York with the, with Durant, that would be so scary. And that's probably the only tandem that can take down Giannis though, because you know somebody has to stop him from being in the paint, so. <laughs> Yep. When, we, when, when you think long term, you have to think, okay, well, we get Durant, we get Anthony Davis. They'll, they'll carry us for at least the next four to eight years because you want to be a contender. They've been in the trash for, <laughs> for how long? <laughs> Forever. <laughs> I saw the, yeah, I saw, the, I saw the one, one year at Melo, they've been in the trash for a long time. So I think if we get that, that's a that's an immediate win. You're going to immediate contention in the East. And I think that's what you want because Durant, he's playing for his legacy if he signs there. So the best thing to do is to get Anthony Davis. Because I don't think Kyrie or Kim is going to win it for him in the East. They're great players, but as a two, the way the league is set up, I don't think those guys would get KD a, a championship in the East. Well, it, it, all, it all depends on your – I mean, you know you know the world is now about your big threes and, and all that. It really depends on who that would be. Um, I think a Knox will emerge as a great scoring option. Um, not necessarily, it might not be a three, but if it, but if the three, if the three is, if you got Davis and got Kevin, or you got Kimba, and you got Durant. Your three got to be Zion. You're like Zion, Zion needs to be a he needs to be the guy that walks in day one and is already like almost all star level. Like he, because he should. He, I mean, as far as it took. Until he gets hurt, cause I, my biggest thing is I think he's too big for his size, and I, I think I don't think he's gonna last that long. But until then, um, he needs he should walk in right in and be a uh, be a star. And if he do that as a one year one year wonder with the with the Knicks and Davis and Akimba or Kyrie, I mean they can they can do something, uh, especially if you add shooters around them. They could do something, especially in the East, if, especially uh, with, with even with, even if Kawhi stays there. Uh, you talk about a, 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 a good, good three headed monster in the East, and uh, like you said, somebody got to stop Giannis. And yeah, if if you don't get Davis, uh, Kevin Durant, and Kimber, that's not stopping Giannis. No, you're you're totally right on that. So ultimately, what we have, nobody wins in any Celtics are trash, Sixers are trash, the points are trash. I mean, and and the Knicks can still be trash. I mean, so, so everybody, loses. everybody. I mean, yeah, it, it's and it's and it's hard. It's hard for these teams who. Who get in situations? Because um, I mean, we can we can add more teams to the list. You know, whether that's the Lakers, especially if they strike out again in the free agency, they they gonna be looking right now. They can't get a coach. You got you got the, you got fans riding outside the Staples Center going to the front office or whatever they're doing. Uh, got a report on that. It's like it's it's a bunch of it's a bunch of stuff in the NBA. It's like if you're not if you're not a, a contending team, because the thing about the Boston and Philly, those are big markets, and even though Boston. And Sixers like are, are part of that big four in the East. 
they can go from the top four to I won't say bottom, but to a really non contender real very, very fast. And the Hornets, they can't they can't even get to be in the playoff team before they can even consider themselves. But I think the Hornets are the out of those three teams, I think the Hornets are the biggest ones, biggest losers because they're gonna they're gonna constrain themselves. They're totally screwed either way. Right. And it's, it's and it's bad. I mean the only the only saving grace they can do is Sign and trade Kimball somewhere, and that's the only that's the only way they can even come out okay. And then again, who who would you what, what would a team give back besides the picks? Because I mean, the player you get not going to be as good as Kimball. No, it, it would be it'd be mostly picks. Um, maybe a serviceable young young guy. I really don't know. It, it'd be, I mean, salary wise, maybe someone to come off the books on the other team. That's you know clearly not a great NBA player, but. Just to make the salaries match up, I guess I could see that, but it's going to be picks. I mean, it has to be a re- and it has to be this year because he's going to be twenty. He's twenty nine this month. You can't really wait much longer. Yeah. Once you get thirty, that's that's tough. Lose, lose, <laughs> lose, lose. Yeah, hopefully he's not like John Wall though. He got paid and got hurt right away. <laughs> wasting, wasting all the years away. Yeah, he was uh, two two years in a row. John Wall got hurt, didn't he? As far as season wise, you know, you know he's hurt and he probably won't even play next year. So, <laughs> man. And he got he got his money and he went straight to the to the hour. <laughs> to the year. Yeah, his was an his was an Achilles, wasn't it? John it Wall? was a yeah yeah torn Achilles. That's yeah that's tough. I mean, even he said he has no idea if he's gonna you know come back for the next season. That's tough, especially when your Achilles is like John Wall is an explosive player. All his game comes from oh yeah his explosiveness. So taking away the Achilles like that, that's a huge injury. Uh, that's really tough. Mm. Well, yeah, that's all time we have for today. Appreciate Kevin Preach. Appreciate Rashad. Appreciate you, Mike, for joining me to join us today, man. And as you see, lose lose situations going on in the NBA, and, and we can all we're going to see is them continue to lose because, I mean, what else are they going to do? So, if you're looking for a GM, holler at your boys <laughs> right here. <laughs>